How's it going, Yankee fans? My name is Alex with my co-host here, Nick Nielsen. And guess what? Andrew Benintendi is a Yankee in the outfield. Ryan and I discussed it last night on a breaking episode. Uh, but I want to talk about how the Yankees and general manager Brian Cashman fleeced the Royals for this trade, right? I personally think uh, this was a really good value acquisition for the Yankees. They get a former all-star uh, they get a guy who is unbelievable with runners in scoring position. We'll talk about those numbers once again. We'll talk about what he's going to contribute to this team and how he's going to be a massive offensive upgrade over Joey Gallo, whose uh, playing time is seemingly dimi diminishing. And I'll tell you what, Aaron Boone said after yesterday's loss, they didn't want to <laughs> – he actually thought it was unfair for Joey Gallo to go out there against Max Scherzer. So what does that tell you? He has no faith in Gallo performing against really good pitchers, That's tough let to alone hear. bad ones. That's tough to hear. So – you know, this is a guy who is expecting to leave, according to the, to NJ.com. Uh, somebody close to Gallo said that he's expecting to get traded soon. He wants to go to the Padres, a smaller market where he can enjoy the West Coast and also kind of uh, help help a team that's not going to be as intense and the fans aren't going to just destroy him at every chance and boo him off the field um, or the diamond, rather. So you know, you're talking about Andrew Benintendi, who's a fantastic batter, a guy that can get on base. He's got some underrated power, 17 homers last year, three homers this year so far. So he hasn't been able to get that home run total up as much as you'd like, but Nonetheless, he sprays the ball over the field. You cannot play the shift against him. He's a solid defender, a really good guy uh, to have, and I want to talk about what the Yankees gave up for him. Uh, before we do so, Nick, how do you do today, my friend? I'm great. I mean, <clears throat> as you said last night, the breaking news, Ben, like literally right after the game, Cashman and Coe said no time and said, yeah, send it. And they acquired Andrew Benintendi. You and Ryan were very quick on the, on the jump. We got to see Vacation Ryan last night just vibing. Uh, that was fun. Um, but I, I'm very happy because at the at first when I saw the Yankees gave up three prospects for him, I was a little bit worried. <clears throat> I was like, okay, I, I hope it's not going to be, you know, a cut like one top 12, top 13 guy that somehow the Royals managed to get from us. But instead, it was a couple of lottery picks, essentially. Like that's what everyone's calling these, these types of prospects. They're lottery picks, very low floor, but a pretty high ceiling. Um, and at the end of the day, what they gave up for Ben Intendi as a player and as the quality of player he is, I think they absolutely 100% won the deal. The only reason I wouldn't say they like just like completely left the Royals in the dust and said, screw you guys, is because Ben Intendi is just a half season rental. Um, but at the same time, for all I know, he could do really, really well <clears throat> these next two months and get a four year, 50 million, four year, $48 million contract extension. I don't know, but love the deal. Love having him. He's a great guy to plug in the lineup. And I'm excited to kind of break down how Cashman was able to get some value out of this. I know he's not the flashy Juan Soto that everyone was talking about. But Andrew Benintendi is a very, very good baseball player and will help this team a ton. Absolutely. And, you know, just a second ago, John Heyman uh, tweeted out that the Yankees are not out on Juan Soto. Um, but again, like it, getting Benintendi definitely steers our vision oh baby let's go <laughs> so, so they're excited. not out on, on on soto but i'll tell you what i do think it steers our uh vision toward luis castillo yes. more so than soto yes. in my opinion but it, i could be wrong on that um but let's talk about what the yankees gave up because i think cashman did a tremendous job waiting out the market not overspending for a guy like ben Intendi. people thought maybe you know Esteban Floria. People thought maybe they'd have to give up a guy like Oswaldo Cabrera. You know, people threw That's out what names I was that, about like Oswaldo right. Cabrera or even like Josh Bro. I was like, those yeah. guys are, are two guys that have very high high ceilings, and their floors are a lot higher than these other guys we gave up. So exactly, I was a little bit worried, but oh yeah, sorry. Continue. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean you're right though. Like they should they should have uh, you know waited. They did wait, and they got away with not giving up too many great uh, players. All of the three prospects, Beckway, Chandler Champlain, and TJ Sakem are all pitchers in single A. One of them's in low A, two of them are in high A. But let's take a look at Beckway, probably the best yeah. of the three. 22 years old, a Pennsylvania native, fourth round in the 2022 MLB June Amateur Draft out of Northwest Florida State College. Uh, right now, he has a 3.73 ERA over 72.1 innings. Projects as a future relief pitcher, but again, he's high A right now. He's three years away from probably making his MLB debut. If he ever does make his MLB debut, then you have uh, Champlain, who is in low A Tampa, 4-3-0 ERA over 73 innings pitch. He's another guy that's three to four years away. And then Sakama, 24 years old. He's a little bit older for a guy in Hudson, a, Hudson Valley, high A. But he does have a 2-4-8 ERA over 36 innings, um, 21 hits and 54 strikeouts. Yeah, he's. I think uh, he's so, got the most. I think he's got the most talent of the bunch, Sakema. Right. His he's problem is that he's had injuries that have kind of slowed him down. 
So that's why he's only in right. high A at 24. I think the last three seasons he's battled injury. But that's the thing. That's the that's in my opinion the best guy we gave up is a 24 year old, maybe he's late 23 in high A baseball. Like that's that's not that big of a give up for an all star. Granted, it, he may have gotten the all star just because he was like the only Royal player that got the all star. But Ben Intendi has been a really really solid outfielder this year. I mean, the guy's batting 320, and I'm not one to really use batting average, so I'll use OPS. He's OPSing 780. I'll go one step further and use WRC plus. His WRC plus is 128. This guy is much closer to DJ LeMahieu than he is IKF as a contact hitter, and that's what I love to see. Some of those doubles may turn into home runs with a short porch. I don't know. And even if they don't, the fact that he at least hits doubles is a nice sight. I mean, like the thing is, is that we have a couple. He's got 14 doubles on the season and three home runs. That's not a lot. But if he finishes the season with say 10 home runs, which means he hits seven in, in pinstripes, you can't. You couldn't really ask for more out of Ben Intendi. Like he's not there to hit home runs. And it's not like with IKF where it's like, okay, he's literally one dimensional. It's only singles. It's this guy walks a ton. He doesn't strike out a lot, a la IKF, but he also doesn't swing at really bad pitches, unlike IKF. So Ben Intendi, think of just like a, like I said, like a little, like a slightly watered down DJ. That's what, that's the type of player Ben Intendi is. And he absolutely mashes righty pitchers, which is nice. Cause I mean, while there are a lot of good lefties in our division, I mean, let's be honest here. I, I, it's, it's a pretty stacked AL East. There are also a lot of good righties in the AL in general. And let's not forget, Andrew Benintendi has hit a couple of home runs off of Justin Verlander. And I believe is OPSing like 820 versus the Houston Astros this season. This is a great acquisition for what we gave up, for what we wanted, and for what we needed. This is like an A overall grade for me. Maybe an A minus because it's like we gave up three guys for a half season of Benintendi. But then again, like you said, Gallo's on his way out. So I could see Gallo getting dumped for a couple of high A, low A prospects that we just put back in the system. I don't know. Right. And, you know, Ben Intendi right now, you know, he's really young at 28 years old. So still a lot of, uh, you know, mileage left on him. I think the Yankees could even consider extending him after this season and have the first, right first chance to do that. You know, he's, he is a great contact hitter. The Yankees now have a really awesome mesh of great contact hitters and great sluggers, you know, guys that get on base. And I think Ben Intendi is going to offer, a uh, significant improvement in that. Like you mentioned just a second ago, it's right. He's hitting 340 with a 41% on base rate and 432 slug and 839 OPS. But let's not ignore the fact that he's a good hitter against lefties too. And he's a lefty 274 with a 34% on base rate and 663 OPS. Um, only 12 strikeouts and 106 at bats. The guy does not strike out very often. He makes a lot of contact. He's a really low center of gravity, really small strike zone. So he's able to get his eye on the ball a lot easier. Now, uh, I have a couple of questions, and mm-hmm. before I do that, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what I think um, the most valuable aspect of Ben Intendi is is his ability to hit with runners in scoring position. With RISP, he is hitting 294 with a 382 OBP, 341 slugging, and 723 OPS, only 12 strikeouts and 85 at bats, 30 RBIs, 14 walks, and 25 hits. The guy hits with runners in scoring position. That is so much better than walking out freaking Gallo against Edwin Diaz to guarantee a strikeout, right? Like you're going to get so much more value with guys in scoring position. Remember the Tampa Bay Rays when we just could not beat them for the life of us. The way they won games is by hitting with runners in scoring position. They didn't have a ton of sluggers. They hit with runners in scoring position. Andrew Benintendi is elite in that metric specifically. So that is something that I really like about him. But Nick, I'll ask you these two questions. One, where do you think the outfield lies now that you have Ben Intendi probably settled into left field? What happens to Aaron Hicks? And where do you think he kind of features in the batting order? Because I know predominantly he's been second in the lineup, but I could totally see him leading off. Yeah, I mean, both of those are great points. Like the thing is, is with Ben Intendi and Hicks, I will say Hicks is the better defensive player than Ben Intendi. That's not really a question in my opinion. And Hicks also, for people worried about, oh, why we shouldn't put Hicks in right field. He's been playing left field this season. Hicks has more career innings in right field than he does left. So honestly, I could see an alignment of, <clears throat> especially while Giancarlo's out, Judge in center, Benny in left, Hicks in right. Maybe they put Benny in right, Hicks in left, because Hicks has been playing in left field a lot now, and Ben Intendi can use the short porch and have an easier job over there. It doesn't really matter to me, because at the end of the day, they're two solid corner outfielders that we can just swap around. And also, Hicks can now play a little bit more center field to relieve Judge every now and then. So I really like getting him for the outfit alignment, and we don't have to see any more Matt Carpenter in the outfit. It was fun while it lasted. I'm sorry. Keep him in the infield. 
But this is even better because now if we put him at third base, that eats into that eats into Josh Donaldson's reps. So this Ben and Tendi trade just has a nice little trickle effect where a lot of things are changing in the lineup and all the kind of bad bats are being phased out by having him come in. So I also think that he could lead off, yes, but I also wouldn't mind seeing him bat fifth or sixth. Because if you have a lineup of DJ, Judge, Rizzo, I guess I'm saying this is when everyone's healthy. You have DJ, Judge, Rizzo, Stanton, Benintendi, Glaber, Hicks or Carpenter, Trevino, and then IKF. Uh, that's that's a that's a World Series lineup as of right now. And also getting Benintendi for basically nothing, like you're saying, the essential fleece. I know the MLB trade calculator has it as an even trade. It's it's difficult to like truly like value which one is like a better deal for the teams. But when you see Royals fans all saying, holy shit, we got fleeced. That that usually means it's probably not a great trade. Um, I, I just love it because now you can put Ben and Tendi lead off. You could put him in the two hole if you really wanted to. And you could bat judge in the three or you could bat judge lead off for all I care. You could bat Benny fifth. You could bat him ninth and have him turn around the lineup. You could have him bat seventh and basically make it so Trevino and IKF are a little bit more like, all right, like I got to get through Ben and Tendi now. Like there's a lot of options with him and he makes this team infinitely better, even if it's not the flashy signing. And we still are going to make the flashy signings. That's why I like this deal because Cashman just shored up one need, a corner outfield bat. Even if they platoon him against righties, I don't really know what they're going to do long term, but that this doesn't take them out of Castillo. This doesn't take them out of Soto, honestly. This doesn't take them out of Montas if they wanted him. They're still going to get relievers. I just really like it because I think this is a really solid first move to make. It is. And we're going to be, you know, monitoring the trade market, obviously, and get you guys all the necessary updates. And he's um, vaccinated. Yeah, or he's going to get vaccinated. He's going to get vaccinated. Yeah, he's going yeah, to get vaccinated. That's huge. That's money. That is huge. That is huge for the Yankees who, you know, that was a, a little bit of a concern since they do have to play another series in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, but I do expect the Yankees. In the postseason. Maybe Canada is a place you got to face them in the ALCS. And it would suck to have Ben and Tendi not be able to play in those games. That's true. Yeah, you, we're definitely going to need him in the postseason. That's uh, first and foremost. But I do think that he's going to be vaccinated. Shouldn't be a problem moving forward. Um, but guys, any other news that comes out, we got you covered almost instantaneously as quick as we can possibly record a video and get it out. Got you guys covered. Hopefully, they'll make another splash move. Uh, Castillo definitely in their sights. Juan Soto, they're not out just yet. So we'll keep you guys updated on that front as well. Three Hope schools. you guys enjoyed. <laughs> It's cool. But yeah, we'll see what happens. But I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, my friends. Make sure to like and subscribe as always. And we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Yankees episode. Mm -hmm.